Hi, to those of you who are able to attend, I just want to thank you for showing up to the mentorship webinar, which we try to hold quarterly. And this one has gone out a lot past the quarter, you know, because there's been a lot of things going on in life that kept some of us busy, those of us who organize these things. But here we are without further ado. And what we're going to do is we're going to press through this presentation, and it's going to be recorded for anyone who discovers it afterwards. And thank you all, too who shows up to the recording and sits through and takes something away that you could either use to help yourself, your kids, or you could either share it with someone else who might need uh, this information. All right, so I can see Dante Hill just joining the conversation. And by all means, I want everyone to chime in uh, whenever you want to with a question or a comment. Uh, this is not me talking at you. It's a discussion. It's how it's intended to be. And again, we're being recorded so that others can discover this information. So here's what we put together. It's a Everything I Was Not Taught series. And as we go through this, what I would like for you all to do is to think about something that you would like for us to cover in a, a subsequent top, a, a subsequent web, webinar or something that you might want to present on, and then we can help you out with the presentation. And this is going to be very focused because, obviously, we can't cover everything that a person hasn't been taught within a series. So this one is going to be focused uh, somewhat on the financial aspect of knowing where your time and your money is going. You know, it's very important to, to youth as they start out, you know, they're about two or three weeks into their summer vacation. Some of them are starting out with summer jobs. So this is something that uh, could potentially help them. And it might even help some of the adults as well. So for the purpose of recording, I'm just going to go through and do another introduction of our team. I'm the site founder, Gus Wright, and then obviously Amir Weston is the co-founder. And just to reiterate what our mission is so that no one, uh, you know, misconstrues anything. We're here to help create lasting solutions to systemic devaluation of black people. And we want to reduce crime and homicide rates and prevent social injustice through mentorship. And we're not holding a march. Instead, we're figuratively suggesting we march into some black child's lives. And the goal is to facilitate accessibility to positive blacks in an effort to normalize goodness. Okay, so that's our mission. And these are our founders. And if you go to our website, you can uh, see some more of our mentors like Ms. Denise Scott and Dante Hill and many others uh, who are out there willing to share insight with the youth and also with the parents of the youth. Okay, so today's uh, motivation. Okay, and this is a great series that I'd recommend folks to go to Netflix. And what this is about is um, it's talking about the uh, – racial wealth gap, and it explains it uh, down in the details. And they'll do a far better job than I can, but I'm just going to point out some of the impacts here. Okay, so we all know that June, uh, that we also celebrate Juneteenth, which is when the word that slaves had been freed finally made it down to Texas, and that was uh, several years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed by Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. Okay, but here's the thing that we have to understand, that by 1863, slaves were worth over $3 billion. Uh, and, and according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, inflation of a dollar goes up 1.92% per year. Okay, so if you go to their site and use their calculator, it only allow you to go back to the year 1913. But if you were to take $3 billion and apply the inflation rate up until today's date, it will be over 77 trillion dollars, I hope I'm reading that right, that black people will be worth. And uh, I want you all to do some soul searching on that, you know, to really, really, really put things in perspective for yourself, uh, how much of an impact systemic racism and unaccountability plays within our lives. And if you look at the stats up in the upper right, uh, the average savings account, uh, including assets and mining, minus debts for a white family today is $171,000, and for an equivalent black, is about 17000 So there's a huge disparity there, and it continues to grow. And if you want a deeper explanation, I would encourage you to go back and sit through this uh, Explain documentary on Netflix, and then they'll walk you through a lot of the things that went into uh, those numbers being the way they are today. 
Okay, so I'm going to go straight into I was not taught. Okay, so I was not taught, you know, the value of time and money or how to save. You know, and the way I see these things is, is their power. Power um, is definitely your time. You don't want to give away your time. And I even tell young folks uh, today, uh, young black professionals within the office space, not to ask for permission to do the things that they know need to be done. Just do them. Because if you give away that amount of power to someone else to tell you how to spend your time, then they're basically going to determine how successful you'll be. So use your time wisely and tell people how you're going to use your time versus asking them how, how you should use your time. So that's something that will empower us to, to do some thinking on our own. And another thing is, is money. Don't give away your money. And money comes from time. It comes from how you spend your time. You know. And I like to point back to the Montgomery bus boycott from 1955, which lasted about 365 days. Lots of people think, oh, these black people got together and they organized and they made those folks care enough to give us the rights not to have to sit at the back of the bus. But, you know, I look at it in another way. That could be true. true. It could be very well true, but I look at it in another way. You know, that bus boycott costed the city about $3,000 per day. So I really... And my heart of hearts think that, you know, especially looking at the way things are today, perhaps they didn't care after seeing people boycott and protest. Perhaps they cared about the money that they were losing. So that's your power. You, you should know where your money is going and you should be able to be able to account for it. And this is a tool that was developed to help out uh, young people uh, down at the lower right, the summer job savings tool. And we'll talk some more about that here in a second. Okay, that brings me to the mentor of the quarter. Mentor of the quarter is going to be uh, Amaya Wright, you know, and uh, th this is, it just so happens to be my daughter, and I'm not just giving her credit because she is. And she's a very positive young lady, and you can read more about her on our website, www.millionmentorsmarch.org, and go to slash our mentors. But what she did is she helped to come up with this too. She started her first summer job, and she wanted to be able to uh, know where her money was going. So together we uh, came up with a way of doing that. And if you go to the website, you'll have the opportunity to copy this tool, and we can talk about the tool here right now. So let's go ahead and go to the website and look at the tool. So if you go to the website, millionmentorsmarch.org, you'll see this link, Summer Job Download Tool. All you have to do is just click it. And it will prompt you to make a copy of this tool into your uh, Google Sheets. So once Martin I hit Scott. Mr. Hey, how's it going, Mr. Scott? How are we doing today, sir? Hey, we're doing well, man. We're just walking through uh, a tool here. And we've been recording here for a second. So uh, if you missed the first portion, you can go back and check out the recording. Uh, but we're just going to walk through a tool real quick that's going to help out the youth. Okay, and this too can be found on www.millionmentorsmarch.org, and you just hit the download link, and it'll prompt you to make a copy of it. So, okay, so what okay. this tool does, it, it allows you to come in here and look at what they're making during the summertime. Okay, so we'll start here at the top right. You have a percentage group, then you have a percentage, and then you have amounts. So say, for instance, uh, this young lady might want to – give herself 35% of what she earns, okay? And she might want to set aside 15% for her senior funds because she might be starting her senior year. And she might want to put aside 15% for unforeseen college expenses that might come up when it's time for her to go to college. And if she has a vehicle, she might want to put aside 15% for unforeseen things that might happen with the vehicle. And she might be saving uh, for a new laptop to start college with, okay? And that all totals out to 100%. So what the kid do, does then is they'll, they'll, they'll go to work as normal, then they'll get a paycheck. And let's say, for instance, that paycheck is 360 bucks, just hypothetically. They'll put that in there, and then it gives them some amounts. So that will say, okay, you'll see total saved, right? You should be saving. If you're going to save what you think you're going to save, you should – save $234. So what that 
kidneys do now is to come to this column and type in 234, and that's that spending cut line. Once your account or your if you're saving in a shoebox hits $234, stop spending until you get your next paycheck. And total spent, okay, you've allocated 36, 35% for yourself, so you'll come into this column and put 126. So that means that, okay, I can spend $126 for whatever I want, and then I will not break my goal, whatever that goal is for the summer, or I will not go over my spending cut line. And I'll be able to, to have some money for my senior funds, my college expenses, my car maintenance, and my new laptop. And then you'll go ahead and zero this out for the next paycheck. Okay, and a couple weeks later, the kid gets another paycheck, and let's say they didn't work as many hours, and it's $273.86. Okay, so that'll give them some new numbers, and they'll go through that same process. Total saved, 178.01, and then they'll come in here and say, okay, I am authorized to spend $95.85 of that money. And you'll notice they'll go check one, check four, check five, so on and so forth throughout the entire summer or however long that they work. And this will help them to keep track. And that total saved, that's that spending cut line. So as you build up your savings throughout the summer, you should never go below this, this amount of money. And this will allow you to account for every dollar spent during the summer and how you spent your time. So this is a tool that the kids can download and use. And um, Amaya came up with this. Hats off to her, and all you'd have to do is just go over to the website and hit the uh, link to download the tube. So let's come back here to our presentation. Any questions about it before we go further? Okay. So this was a very quick webinar. And we just wanted to get together since it's been such it's been a, a long time since we came in, and we're going to try to get back on track with doing these things every quarter. But here's here's the thing: we want to get topics from you all. What you want to what you want to know? If if there's something that you feel like, okay, if I had known this, or if it's something that you want to share with the group, if I had known this, then life would be a whole lot more easier for myself right now. So are there any topics that you all propose for the next webinar or something that you want uh, myself to put together or something that you want to present on your own? Hey, this is Dante. Hey, hey what's um, going on, Dante? It's another beautiful day here in Virginia. Um, since we're talking about things we didn't learn, I, and I'm, I'm liking the theme of the series, I think we should, um, as we go along, as we go further, go in depth in the things, you know, college planning, um, finance, you know, financial planning, um, like how to, na like basically all the stuff we're learning as adults later in life, the stuff that we should have learned in high school or should have learned as kids, you know, like, hey, how to save, how, you know, how to invest, how to buy a house, because nobody talks about that stuff. It's like. Hey, I want to go do this. Now I got to go jump online and go do the research, find a realtor, find a bank. You know, nobody, nobody really in our community talks about that stuff. Like Absolutely. my peers, you know, we don't talk about buying a house until it's time to go buy a house. Like mm -hmm. you know, nobody cares us for that stuff. So I think that's as we progress in the series, is to go down that path and give them, you know, give our kids this, these tools and where to look for versus you know later on down the line like oh. Um, I've got to go find a broker and a banker and a real estate agent. You know, let's let's prepare let's prepare them for success and build on that so they have a resource they can go look at. And hey, here's the steps. You know, here's a basic laydown of what you're going to go through, what you're going to experience, and what to look for. Absolutely, man. You want to tackle that one, and I can help you with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So three months should, uh, from now. Three, mm -hmm. three months from now, that can be the next one that we do, and that that'd be great. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, though. No, it's it's a it's a, I got a long, I had a laundry. We we talked about this before in previous webinar. You know the stuff we the stuff we didn't learn. I think you know coming out the biggest two things our kids are going to face. The first things our kids are going to face like is not going into debt, going to college, and buying their first car. You know yep. those. I think those are the two. The first first two things I think 
you know, as you start this one, hey, saving for a summer job, you know, a lot of kids don't don't think about that. Like, and shout out to your daughter, she put together a thing, you know, hey, this is what I this is what I make, this is what I want to do with it, you know, hey, these are the first steps in preparing our kids for economic success. Yeah, absolutely, man. Because um, I'll be the first to tell you, um, I've been working oh, since I was about 12 years old, and I I cannot account for every penny. I don't know where it went, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and then that's that's not good. And so, you know, we if we can prepare our kids to do better than that, that would be awesome. So yeah, it, you just uh, if you could tackle that one in the next three months, we'll do another webinar. I'll check up with you probably a month out, and you let me know yeah. what you want. Yeah, let me know what you want me to contribute to it. If you want me to put together the presentation, you can just send me all your data, and I can do it like this one, and it, it's no problem at all. And that would be um, that would be awesome to hear from you. That's definitely, uh, I'm, I'm on top of that. I think I'm gonna tackle uh, um, preparing for college and buying a car. You know, navigate nav okay. a lot of they don't teach us how to navigate fast. You know, they we get ready to send our kids off to school and they're all sign, you know, sign up for student loans. And, you know, there's other, other alternatives to that, you know, and preparing your other, other means available. Cause you know, I, I see it today where, you know, where I'm at, you know, these kids are coming out of school and they're like, Oh, I'm crushed by debt, you know? And I'm like, you know, did you, did you plan up prepare? No, nobody told them how to plan or prepare for it. They just told them here's money for school. Take it. And, you know, it, yeah. it has detrimental effects on them for the next, you know, for some of them for the rest of their lives. Absolutely. It's hard to get out of that debt, man. It'll beat you down. Uh, how you all doing? Uh, this is Marcus Scott speaking. One of the things that I would like to speak on as far as when it comes to the debt is actually being aware of credit and how this debt affects your credit at a later date if you're not mindful of it uh, in advance. Uh, and just the, the key concept of uh, establishing your credit at a young age. Yeah, absolutely. So how, how about we tackle this as a team, and then uh, you take that part of it, Mr. Scott, and then you take the other part, um, Dante, and then yeah. from there uh, I can be the guy who collects everything and put it, puts it all into a presentation. Okay. Well, I want yeah, to say that. that one of the things uh, uh, that uh, Mr. Dante was speaking on was, you know, uh, accepting these loans. A lot of college students don't realize that later on those loans are thrown, you know, on your credit and, and you have to pay back these loans. And if you can't, then it does affect your credit. So just knowing that the effects of accepting these loans, uh, if you take out and things like that, and how it, it, it may be beneficial at that moment, but later on it does have a, you know, uh, it, it can create an issue. Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be awesome to get some insight, and then we'll capture it in a recording and hang it on the website, and then just publicize it on on social media for for kids to be able to just tap into all of this knowledge base that you guys have probably learned the hard way, you know. Because I know I learned a lot of things the hard way, and um and also uh, thinking of mentors and mentees of the quarter. If if there's somebody you guys are interacting with out in the community that you just want to highlight, because, you know, I, I feel like we truly need to um, validate our own people, you know, and let them know that, hey, you're doing great things. And even if it's nothing more than a thank you and hanging their picture on the website for a couple weeks and, and just, uh, you know, trying to make them feel good about themselves until we establish ourselves to be able to do bigger and better things. Yeah. Yep. Now, but I, 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 I'm not. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, um, as far as college as well. I mean, uh, Mr. Wright, you know that I, that I'm military. Are we going to speak on military um, at all? As far as the you know the the um, benefits that you can get out of military. Um, it, it's so many different directions that we can go with um, with this uh, to include military and, and things like that. Yeah, I certainly uh, is, think is that it's something um, that we can speak on. Yeah, yeah, I certainly think it's worth because when you lay out all the opportunities out there, then that's definitely one of them. I mean, I'd be the first to tell you, there's no way I would have been able to afford college without the military. So, um, yeah, yeah, we have to put that out there that that is an opportunity because we it's the one thing that we don't need within our community is one less opportunity. So we we yeah. need to talk about the military and talk about any other alternatives that there are out there. 
Okay. Yeah, this was a very quick one. Um, you know, and uh, do we have any other proposals for uh, follow-on topics? Um, has adequacy taught at all? I'm sorry, I, you broke up there for a second. Which one was it? Has has adequacy been addressed at all? Just you know, like when it comes to like formal dining and things like that, has, has that been um, addressed? No, we haven't addressed that. So yeah, we can definitely do that as a part three. Yeah, we can do that as a part three. So um, I'm taking some notes over here. So so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, part two, we'll do uh, financial planning. And uh, part three, we'll do uh, etiquette and uh, how, to, uh, how to handle yourself in formal settings. So, and then from there, we'll start to make even further recommendations. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn off the record button because I think we've captured a pretty good webinar here. And then we can stay on the line. I got about another 15 minutes or so. We can stay on the line. It's all up to you guys if you want to uh, continue to talk and catch up because I know I haven't heard from you all in, in quite a while. So yeah. thanks again for, for joining the webinar. And uh, for those that would like to know more about our lectures, just visit, visit www.millionmentorsmarsh.org and hit the lectures tab. And within 72 hours, this lecture will be publicized on that site as well as a recording. Thanks again.